Welcome back, Eric Hattie, Everyday Hustle. Hey, uh, so it's been a while. It's uh, it's been about four weeks since I've I've recorded an episode, and I'm gonna tell you, it's a little weird. It's been a bit of a mind fuck. Uh, so let's let's cover what we've missed in the last uh, four weeks. So if you notice, there's a different chair. Uh, the other one, rest in peace, after five years of solid service and duty. Uh, decided it was going to get a super ghetto lean to, to one side and it was time to retire. Uh, you'll also notice that I'm coming in a very crisp, clear 4K uh, with a very beautiful depth of field behind me. Uh, and that's because uh, an asshole cat decided to chew through my old camera. Uh, it was a uh, Logitech 920 webcam. And because we're in the middle of COVID-19 and lockdowns and quarantines, uh, there are very few webcams available uh, of any reputable sort. Uh, so in true Eric Hattie fashion, I uh, bit the bullet and bought a Canon M50 mirrorless digital SLR uh, that also can be used as a webcam uh, for my, my work conference calls. Uh, but because it's a digital SLR with a very fancy Sigma 16 millimeter lens, uh, I am coming in very crisp and clear with a very beautiful saturation of color. If, uh, if you're listening on the podcast, you're fucking missing out. It's, uh, it's pretty gorgeous. Um, it's unfortunate that there's not a better subject for this wonderful camera to capture, uh, but it's what you get. So, yeah, how's everybody doing? Uh, hopefully, uh, everybody's staying safe out there. World's getting a little fucking nutty. Um, my wife was just telling me, uh, she, she popped in to, to vote in the runoff election today. Uh, and you had to turn left in the polling station if you were a Democrat and turn right if you were a conservative. Ironic. Uh, and she said that everybody in the Democrat line was wearing a mask and everyone in the conservative line was not. And I never thought I'd see the day where a medical safety precaution became something so politically polarized. It's fucking crazy. Um, if nothing else, uh, it'll make a hell of a story to tell our kids and our grandkids someday. Um, those of us that survive, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so yeah, welcome back. Um, I, I, I'm going to be honest, guys. Um, I was a little bit in my head, uh, and, and that's why there's been a bit of a lapse. There's been a, a, a lot going on in the world of Eric, uh, both personal and professional. Uh, and just uh, the the second to last episode uh, got pulled uh, due to the request of uh, my interviewee's employer, uh, and it got in my head. Uh, it fucked with me, uh, and I'm without saying too much or getting getting my near dear friend in trouble any further. Uh, I thought it was uh, absolute horseshit that uh, two very minute comments uh, were enough to basically uh, send him to be the messenger of, you got to take this down right now. Mind you, we talked for two hours and an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes of that. We were raving about everything that uh, I had learned at the company. He had learned at the company, all the great things and great experiences and opportunities and yada, yada, yada. Uh, but some people just want to uh, focus on the tiny little negative and ignore all the good around them. But it got in my head. And, and even though it wasn't the most recent episode, uh, the, the last episode was with my dad for Father's Day. Uh, that was different. It's my dad. And uh, it was, I really enjoyed recording that episode, but it, the, the act of having to pull the, the other episode down, uh, it totally derailed my thought and my plans. And uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm kind of in my own head because I don't have any interviews lined up. And, and honest to God, that's probably the thing I enjoy more than, more than anything is, is interviewing people and, and learning from others and hearing great stories and, and just fucking laughing. Uh, especially I'm dude, I'm an extrovert. And, and in this day and age, you know, I, I used to spend every week in an airport, uh, meeting strangers and doing new things and, you know, hearing, hearing great stories and, and, uh, you know, nothing against my family, but goddamn, I'm ready to see some, some other faces. Uh, and so those interviews were kind of filling a void. So, uh, th that's, a long story short, uh, I'm, I'm looking to the help of you, my listeners, to uh, recommend and refer anybody you think would be a great uh, guest on my podcast, uh, whether it's something they've done 
personally or professionally. Um, you know, I, I think I, I kind of pigeon held myself a little too much focusing just on, on business and entrepreneurship and, and being a hustler. I mean, it's in the fucking title after all. Uh, but you know, I, I just want to have good conversations and, and I want, you know, inspirational stories or, or interesting stories or, you know, stories with a happy ending, uh, anything that we can share with the world. Um, so if you know anybody, uh, that you think would be a great fit for an interview on, on everyday hustle, please send me a note, uh, put it in the comments, uh, make an introduction. I, I would love, love to get more interviews going, uh, and really just more, more episodes in general. I have zero fucking excuses anymore. I have God's own camera with this beautiful lens. And now that takes the, the horsepower off the computer so I can record, you know, my, my interviewee. And, you know, I, I truly am blessed that I have an amazing setup here that I've, I've accumulated over, over quarantine. Uh, so th- there's no fucking excuses. Uh, this is, it's just purely drive and, and willpower and getting out of my fucking head and just doing it, which is what I'm doing tonight. So, uh, I, uh, I thank you guys for listening. Um, good time to say if, uh, if you haven't already, please click subscribe, hit the like button, you know, leave a, leave a comment. Um, but without further ado, welcome back to everyday hustle. Mm-hmm. Let's, uh, let's, let's make this a, a very special work from home edition of everyday hustle. Uh, there's gosh, I mean, I don't even know how long it, this is what March 98th. Um, uh, I mean, honest to God, I stopped counting how long, uh, we've been work from home and I don't know about you guys out there, but at least in, in my organization, it looks like, uh, I, it, my portion of, of the org chart could very well possibly be work from home forever. Uh, which would not bother me one bit if we were able to continue our, our business travel and I could get out in the field and be face to face with my customers and, and uh, it, I'm going a little fucking batty. Uh, but it's been fascinating. Some of the things that have really kind of come to light in, in this uh, COVID-19 quarantine lockdown, uh, one of which is dress codes. Uh, really just personal care, self care, how you present yourself. Um, you know, we're in this, this world where, you know, we, we used to have these, these, you know, zoom meetings or teams meetings or, or go to webinars. And and it was always funny because nobody would ever turn on their cameras. Uh, and the ones that did were kind of the, the overachievers and, uh, it, it just, it was more of a rarity than anything, at least in, in, in my neck of the woods. Um, and you know, as soon as this, uh, this quarantine kind of started, uh, there was a lot of people in the organization that, that would put in the meeting notes, you know, cameras are mandatory. You must be, you know, on camera. Uh, and, and it was, it was funny at first because you got to see people's kids making disruptions. I mean, hell, my daughter was constantly making appearances in my meetings, um, you got to see, you know, what everybody's house looked like. Um, you know, who was, who was working from a card table, who, who has an office that they, they, they work in, you know, what their artwork is, what does their family look like? Cause you know, you'd see people go walking by in the background. Um, but then as, as the quarantine continued, you started to see what people's level of comfort was in their, their day to day. Um, you know, I, I know personally I was in a branded polo every single day for like the first six weeks. And as soon as I realized that everybody else had stopped caring, I kind of stopped caring too. And then it became t-shirts. Uh, and then it was, you know, I, whatever I was going to wear to the gym when the gym reopened. Um, and, and, uh, now there, there was rumblings in the organization that there's going to be a work from home dress code. And, 
it kind of got under my skin and nothing's even been announced yet. That's, that's the crazy thing is, you know, it was just the concept of telling us what we, we can or cannot wear. Um, and, and it got me thinking. So it's not about the dress code. It's, it's about how you present yourself. Um, for example, I was always a very dressed up guy at the office, but what was funny is people would compliment me. Oh my God, you're so dressed up and you look so nice. And truth be told, I was wearing a V-neck t-shirt and a pair of jeans and some Chuck Taylors. And I would put a blazer on over it, a blazer with a nice lapel flower. And I was ultimately comfortable all day and everybody thought I looked nice. And, and you know, it got me thinking like, okay, in this, this uh, dress code, our t-shirt's going to be not okay. Well, why? I mean, it is, and, and I get it. If it's a t-shirt with, you know, some nacho cheese stains and, you know, it's all, all wrinkled and you clearly just grabbed it out of the hamper, smelled it and it was like, well, fuck, I don't care. Nobody's going to smell me anyway. I'm good. Uh, I, how, how do you, where, where's the line in the sand? Um, I'm, I'm a big believer in this. Everyone is, uh, everyone should have their own style, their own persona, uh, and and their own look. And if that is what you are most comfortable doing your work in every single day, great. So long as it's presentable, you know, it looks like, you know, you bathed in the last few days, you, 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 you did your hair or your beard or, you know, whatever, as long as you look clean, the fuck does it matter what you're wearing right i there's so many you know i I used to work in the satellite industry and when uh when i lost a bunch of weight one of the first things on my bucket list was i was going to go buy some suits i i had bought a custom tailored suit for for my wedding uh and i wore it maybe 10 times and then i dropped 100 pounds and it never fit ever again um which was a very expensive good problem to have uh so i went and bought three new suits and I was compelled to wear these new suits every day to work, but I worked in the satellite industry. Uh, so, you know, it, it, I'm going to these guys that work out of a garage, uh, that are in t-shirt and jeans and I'm, I'm there in a suit and they, they, they don't trust me as far as they could throw me because they're a bunch of good old boys. And they're like, who the fuck's this, this fucking suit? Uh, so it's kind of knowing your audience and you know, the more I, I work with other organizations through, through this uh, quarantine lockdown, everyone's going more and more casual and that's okay. We're literally getting up and we're walking 30 feet from our bed to our office and brewing a cup of coffee. And that's where we sit all fucking day. So you might as well be comfortable. Um, so I, I'm, I don't know. I don't have a hard line stance on this. I, Maybe I'm a bit of an anarchist when I, I I think that it gets a little crazy dictating what somebody should or should not wear. I've I've always felt like dress codes were for, you know, big box retail employees or fast food workers where everybody has to dress exactly the same and look exactly the same. And, you know, in in corporate America, I mean shit, look at look at some of the big companies, you know, the Googles and the Apples and, you know, the the Silicon Valley groups where smart casual is is the new dressing up, right? Um, so anyway, I, I'm, I'm curious what everyone else's thoughts are. Uh, if, if you think that there should be a stricter dress code in this work from home environment, uh, if, if you think it's come as you are, or if you think that, uh, cameras should not be required and fuck it, just leave it off and be voice only. Uh, but at any rate, uh, this is, this is a new world that's not going away anytime soon. So, what are you wearing? You know, we, we talked a couple episodes ago about time management. Um, and, and it's m- more important than ever, uh, in, in a work from home environment. Um, you know, when, when I was in the office, I had a very, very clear and defined structure. I knew that I had to be up at a certain time to take my daughter to school. And then I was going to go to the office and I knew that I had to leave the office by a certain time to pick my daughter up from school and bring her home. And so I had to fit my work day into those constraints. Work from home is a little different because there are, there, there's nothing 
that I sandwich my work day between. Uh, and everyone else is kind of living in the same world. And it was, it was crazy because when we first went to this, this, you know, quarantine lockdown work from home environment, the meetings got earlier and earlier and the, the, the they were booked later and later. And all of a sudden I was looking at a, a calendar where I had calls from seven thirty, eight o'clock in the morning until, I mean, gosh, uh, six, seven o'clock at night and no gaps in between. And so now it's one of those, I, I'm either turning my camera off so I can stuff my face real quick and have lunch or turning my camera off real quick so I can get up and have a, a bathroom break. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I felt compelled to, to come back to the time management conversation again, mostly because, you know, whether you do zero base that I talked about previously, or you have your own method of scheduling, uh, the one little life hack that I've found uh, is to go to, through your entire week um, in, in even two weeks in advance and put a couple breaks in there, whether they're 15 or 30 or uh, one 60 minute break, whatever it may be, block that time out so that when some assholes going through Outlook scheduler and looking to see where they can squeeze their meeting in, you show that you're booked and you've bought yourself some time because I mean, even when we we're in the office, everyone, no, nobody booked lunch meetings. And if they did, they ordered lunch in for everybody, right? It, it It's it's crazy how many people have booked 1130, 12, 1230, you know, one o'clock meetings. And and they're like, oh, sorry. I, I, it was just the only time anybody had available. Yeah, dude, it was lunchtime. That's why. Like, you better fucking send a DoorDash to my house because I'm starving and I'm angry. <laughs> like, uh, it, I don't know. Go in and, and, and block out that time and thank me later uh, because it's given me a little bit of peace of mind where at least I have a 15 or 30 minute window to use the bathroom, grab a shower if it, you know, if I had an early start to the morning uh, or, or, you know, make, make lunch. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, mindlessly scroll social media for a few minutes. Uh, get caught up on fucking emails. I mean, good Lord, you know, the sky's the limit. Uh, but do yourself a favor, go in there, block out some, some time chunks for you every single day. Uh, thank me later. Let's, uh, let's close this out with a little bit of an Eric Hattie rant. When quarantine started every fucking day, I had somebody inviting me to a happy hour and I'm going to tell you right now. I absolutely fucking hate happy hours. And here's why. I miss all of my work friends. I do. I, I, I miss the interaction. I miss the conversation. I miss the camaraderie that you had face-to-face in an office. Uh, but I'm going to tell you this. When you put a calendar invite for a Zoom happy hour on, on my calendar at 5, 5.30, 6 o'clock, I'm not going to fucking go. And he, like... I've sat at my computer staring at the same screen and the same stupid little camera for, for eight, 10, 12 hours. I, the last thing I want to do to relax and unwind is sit in this computer and stare at a screen and the same stupid little camera for another hour while everyone has drinks and talks about how crazy life is. Right. I miss everybody. I promise you, like I value our, our friendships, but God damn it. The, the happy hours have to stop. It's insanity. Like, go go outside. <laughs> go make, make friends in the neighborhood. Do, like, I, I promise you, I'm still your friend. I'm still going to be, you know, someone you can confide in. I'm just not coming to your fucking happy hour. Uh, so let's, let's do us all a favor. And the next time you're about to book a happy hour, stop. <laughs> Don't even think about it. Just, just stop. Uh, and, and I promise you, your friends will thank you later. Um, but, uh, or maybe, maybe we just need a new fucking rule. Like you can have a happy hour once a month. I don't know. Uh, or you can have a happy hour, but you have to door dash or favor, you know, everybody, uh, some booze from the liquor store. Uh, I don't know. Like there needs to be a carrot with the stick to get me to come to this happy hour because, sitting in front of a computer staring at the same fucking camera for another hour of my day, it ain't going to cut it. So let's, let's find a new creative way to continue our friendships and, 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 you know, catch up, uh, without a fucking zoom happy hour. So 
This is side note. I'm really still getting used to this format, probably because I haven't fucking recorded in four weeks. But this format of of uh, uh, you know, I'm doing three topics, and I always got to remember now that at the end of the third topic, I still have to do my fucking outro. Uh, and I almost, I almost hit the uh, hit the the button to stop recording. Um, but but I'll I'll tell you this, everybody. Uh, I if you've made it this far, and I'm trying to be super conscious of keeping these a little shorter, uh, especially when there's not somebody being interviewed. Uh, I appreciate you watching and and uh, listening and you know supporting me. Uh, I I'm I promise you I'm really only doing this for myself and for my sanity. Uh, but I do think it's really cool when people reach out and ask if everything's okay because an episode hasn't hit in a while. Um, so I, I truly, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate everybody. I hope you are all staying safe. I hope you're all being smart. Uh, I hope you're all fighting the fight, whatever that is that you believe in. Uh, but uh, my name's Eric Hattie, and this is Everyday Hustle. And I promise the next one won't take four weeks to come out, and it won't suck. <laughs>